The tide is turning. That's the subject of tonight's Waters words. This was the week that changed the race. President Trump is on course for re-election just if he can maintain this momentum. A confluence of events has reshaped the campaign. A very similar series of events occurred mid-October 2016. Remember what started it? It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. <laughs> that line won the night for Donald Trump. That combined with his response to the Access Hollywood tape. Remember, he invited all of Bill Clinton's alleged mistresses and sexual assault victims to the debate and held a press conference? He doubled down, and it paid off. Remember, around this time, James O'Keefe releases a series of undercover videos showing Democrats admitting to committing voter fraud? The media suppressed it. WikiLeaks released emails showing that Hillary was a fraud. It revealed Hillary took a public and a private position on the same issue, and the media suppressed it. Obamacare premiums started spiking all across the country, especially in key battleground states like Arizona. And Clinton's State Department emails? Yeah, they were found on Anthony Weiner's laptop, a sex offender. And the FBI sat on this for a month until they were forced to announce it. Again, the agency making bad decisions and interfering in political campaigns. And Trump outworked Hillary to the very end, doing rally after rally while Clinton coasted. He capitalized on these events, seized the moment, and he won. And four years later, here we are again. The same dynamic is happening. A confluence of events is redirecting the campaign in Trump's favor, and he's taking advantage of it. Number one, Trump recovered from the coronavirus and barreled back onto the campaign trail. Now, let's be honest. Trump got knocked out of commission for a week. He lost ground because he couldn't travel. But he stormed back and looks better than ever. And the crowds are huge. He's connecting, and he's doing what he does best, and the pandemic fear has been dampened. Number two, Pence crushed Harris in the VP debate. His performance steadied the ship while Trump was out of action and fired up the base. He put on such a beatdown that the debate commission at 7.30 the next morning dropped the bomb that the second presidential debate would be virtual. And they did that to take the wind out of Pence's sails and prop up Biden. Because Biden got mauled face to face and it's easier for Joe to cheat from his basement. And the moderator for that second debate, Steve Scully, he got caught colluding with the mooch, and then he lied he was hacked. And now he's suspended by C-SPAN. And Trump was right. The fix was in. Instead, Trump did a town hall with NBC and put on a very good performance, despite the bias. And when they try to rig it, they always get caught, don't they? And it backfires. And Trump steps up. Number three, Amy Coney Barrett sailed through the hearings. Nobody laid a glove on her. It was a flawless performance by her, Lindsey Graham, and so far, Mitch McConnell. Now, Barrett was so bright and smooth that now Americans won her confirmed by a wide margin. This reminds voters about the stakes in the election and the importance of the court. Trump picked a brilliant woman with perfect temperament. Now, on the other hand, Biden shot himself in the foot refusing for weeks to say whether he'd pack the court. Well, sir, don't the voters deserve to know no, where No, they don't. Deserve. I'm not going to play his game. Now, when it came to a big decision, Joe Biden froze. That's not what leadership looks like. Number four, the Biden family got rocked by a major scandal, and the big tech companies suppressed it. This was a double whammy. Emails show Hunter Biden was selling access to his dad, and Biden was pushing policies for family profit. Joe Biden lied about not knowing what his son was up to. His son introduced him to a Burisma executive. Burisma lobbied the Obama-Biden White House to fire the prosecutor investigating them for corruption, and Biden fired the prosecutor. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had. They were walking out to press conference. Said, "No, nah. I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars." 
I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. Emails also show Chinese money may have been going to Joe Biden himself. But Facebook and Twitter censored the story. Twitter actually locked the accounts of the White House press secretary, the Trump campaign, and the New York Post, the paper founded by Alexander Hamilton. Corrupt partisan monopolies donating millions to the Democrat nominee are now shutting down criticism of them. But it's backfiring and making the story bigger. And Donald Trump's dialed in on it. And the Biden family is a criminal enterprise, and you know it, and so do I. In fact, they sort of make crooked Hillary Clinton look like amateur hour. It's turning into a repeat of 2016. Trump's running against a rigged system that's protecting corrupt politicians. Trump's the underdog all over again. Powerful interests aligned against him, but he's fighting on the side of the people. And when you have the people on your side, you're unbeatable. We're on the verge of another comeback that's going to shake the world.